Greetings everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to look at a news blog, Command the Courage of the Future, and this is a new Infinity promo ship and a lot of people have already commented about how uh, the looks of it anyway. A lot of people don't seem to like it. Uh, I will be one of the first people to argue that ever since JJ Trek they have been going out of their way to try and make Star Trek feel more like Star Wars. So a ship design like this is clearly very far away from the uh, sort of design ideas that we've come to expect from Star Trek and more in line with something you'd see in the background of a Star Wars movie. But if you put all of that aside for a moment, and this is just personal taste, I kind of dig it. I, I think the, you know, a ship that looks like a star base is actually a pretty cool idea. Unfortunately, it's not a carrier. I think that would help complete it. And of course, that may seem like a joke because I like carriers. But if you're going to have a ship that looks like a star base, it may as well fight its battles by deploying ships. Uh, but anyway, this is a uh, science destroyer, one of those uh, hybrid ships. So let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. There's a video here. I'm going to have the uh, blog post here linked in the description. So I'm not going to play the video here, but if you want to go watch it yourself, you can. So you get a closer look at this thing, a sort of demo record footage. It's a nice thing that they've been adding to the blogs for a while now. From the minds of Starfleet's most inventive engineers of the 32nd century comes a ship unlike any other, the Courage Class Command Science Destroyer. And uh, that's going to be available starting uh, today, I believe. And uh, so I will pick it up on Tribble as soon as I have a chance. There will be a review of the ship. And uh, of course, with the promo choice packs, you can pick any of the other promo ships that have come before. So if you've been sitting on a promo choice pack like I have, which I just used to copy to Tribble, then you will be able to get it, at least on Holodeck. They don't always update these things on Tribble right away. I'll have to find out when I get home. And uh, let's go ahead and look at the ship's stats. It is a tier six ship. Um, the Federation or Federation Align, the faction stuff doesn't really matter anymore because we have a cross faction flying. Hull modifier 1.45, shield modifier 1.15, which is uh, a bit unusual. Usually with these science destroyers, they have science leaning stats, or at least that's what you would expect. Of course, the total stat allotment is very high because it is a promo ship, but it is definitely a hull tanking ship and not a shield tanking ship. It has a 4-3 weapon layout, three device slots. It has a uh, Lieutenant Commander Tactical Command, a Lieutenant Engineering, a Commander Science Command. And the important thing to note here is that that Commander Science Command, a Lieutenant Commander Tactical Command swap depending on what mode you're in. So. If you're in science mode, you get the Commander Science Command. That's what's listed here. But if you're in tactical mode, you get the lieutenant, you get a Commander Tactical Command, and that science seat goes down to a Lieutenant Commander. So they flip-flop. If you've never seen these kinds of ships before, it can be a little confusing. But anyway, there's a button that lets you switch back and forth, and it adjusts a whole bunch of other stuff. There's been a bunch of these ships now. They're not really rare anymore. Uh, it has console layout, has four tactical, three engineering, four science, which is trying to bridge the gap there. You know, you get equal tactical and equal science. I do find that when you have ships like this that are a jack of all trades or they're trying to do two things, they're never as good at any one thing. So regardless of which mode you're in, you're only getting four uh, console slots of that type. And regardless of, um, you know, which of the modes you're in, you only get seven weapons and also you know, they're both command seats. Now, command seating is very, very good. It's probably the best seating in the entire game right now. But when it comes to premium ships, and this is just a bugaboo for me personally, I want two different specialization seats to help justify that premium price tag because having two different specializations is one of the only unique things about premium ships. You can find plenty of ships in the C store that have two seats of the same type. So for that premium price, I want two different ones. And this just doesn't deliver that. All right, it comes with um, obviously a new console and a new trait. So we'll scroll down and take a look at that. Uh, it, when you're in science mode, you get a secondary deflector. When you're in tactical mode, you get a um, experimental weapon. So you do get your eighth weapon, but it's basically a 4-3 escort at that point. 
Uh, so it's very good as a science ship, I guess, because you get seven weapons, uh, but it's, it's a little bit lackluster as a tactical ship because it's uh, a 4-3 layout. Anyway, you get the full command uh, abilities, turn the tide against all odds, battle prep. Those are actually pretty good, to be honest. There's a nice buffs, and they're team-wide. Let's go ahead and take a look at the... Well, there's a little thing here. We can look at that for a second. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. It is interesting looking, for sure. Some people have called it a toilet. <laughs> I think it looks a little bit like maybe like a, a, a shoe, uh, but, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you'll come up with your own, uh, your own ideas. And uh, here we're just talking about the tactical and science modes, which we already went over, so we're going to scroll past that. Um, it also affects shields and hull and all that, and it does um, change there. So uh, it, it makes you wonder, uh, because it, it is so hull forward in terms of the stat allocation. In tactical mode, it gets 20% hull capacity. Uh, is that on, you know, with 1.45 hull modifier, that's pretty significant. Uh, science mode, you get the shield capacity instead. And then uh, we have a console universal force translator. This technology suite is capable of translating the force of your starship's forward momentum combined with your mass into destructive energy that can be immediately released upon nearby enemies. So what does it do exactly? Um, it scales on hull cap, so that's one thing, and that's probably the part of the reason why it has such a high hull modifier. And it provides passives to uh, damage from energy weapons based on aux power and maximum hull capacity. And um, I guess it just does like an, an AoE. It doesn't really say uh, definitively what it does. It just says this energy translation stops all movement of your ship, uh, but made more dangerous based on how massive your ship is. So I guess you just stop and then do a point blank AoE. It isn't really that explicit, to be honest. Um, it does cap out in terms of damage at a hull of 300,000, which is pretty difficult to get, and a flight speed bonus uh, capped at 300. So the faster you are and the higher your hull is, the more damage you're going to do when you click the button. Uh, it could be useful for ships that have a hard time stopping and have bad inertia, I guess. Directional bias is the starship trait when damaged from the forward 180 degree arc. The energy will be redirected into the deflector dish, manifest, manifesting as increased damage for exotic uh, damage bridge officer abilities. The stacks built up from the incoming damage are expended and reset when activating an exotic damage bridge officer ability. And uh, when you're hit from behind, instead, it gives you hull regeneration, and it's the same kind of thing. When you use a bridge officer hull heal, you use up all the stacks and you have to start building them up again. So each stack when damaged from the front is 5% cat 2 exotic damage, max 10 stacks, one per second, which is actually pretty slow. Uh, that does mean you need 10 seconds to get 10 stacks, which uh, has me questioning the viability of this, especially when you can get something like uh, exotic modulation and just get bonus exotic damage all the time and not have to worry about stacks or when the ability is, you know, if you fire two off in a row, the first one will get the bonus damage, but the next one won't because you won't have any stacks yet. Or what if you're not getting fired on? Uh, if no one is firing on you, if you have a tank in your group or maybe just for whatever reason you don't have aggro at that moment, uh, then you're not getting anything. So I think this is going to be a highly variable trait. I think it's going to be more trouble than it's worth, to be honest. Just the amount of babysitting and conditions you have to meet in order for it to be better than some other options that just give flat exotic damage, I think is just too much to hassle with. Uh, the whole regeneration stuff, it's not bad, right? Obviously, 1% whole regen, 5% bonus outgoing whole healing for bridge officer abilities. That's not bad, but you have to get hit from behind. And we are talking about a starship trait here, so my initial impression reading the blog post is that this is uh, not good to be honest in terms of the uh, the console clicky we're just going to have to see what the damage output is that's really all it's good for uh, you click it your ship stops you do a bunch of aoe damage if the damage is good people will use it if the damage is not they might use it for the visual effect but otherwise i can i can easily see this ship having a very mediocre uh, accessory score 
It comes with a new experimental weapon, the Coherent Integrity Projector. The Coherent Integrity Projector leverages your ship's structural integrity field to generate a harmonic projectile that deals heavy kinetic damage to your target. A portion of this damage will bypass the target's shields. Uh, and it scales with hull capacity, so that's pretty interesting. And uh, it starts at 100,000 and uh, goes up to 250,000, which is a lower cap than for the, uh, the console. So you'll be able to max out the damage a little bit easier. And uh, we, you know, we'll have to see. This could be really good. Everyone likes the Soliton Wave Impaler because it scales off of engine power and uh, so other experimental weapons that have scaling damage have turned out to be good so maybe this one will be really good as well and since it scales on hull capacity and people are looking to get hull capacity anyway it might be really good and it might be a really good alternative to people who can't have high engine power uh, you know if you're doing high a high aux build and there's a lot of reasons these days to want to do a high aux build then this might be a, an alternative if you're not going to be have as much in engines but we'll just have to see it's going to have to get tested and we're just going to have to see uh, it might be really great or it might be uh, just so so we'll see uh, so that's why you come to these videos so i can tell you we just don't know <laughs> let me just tell you what we don't know go to figure that out yourself and then like i said before if you have a promo choice pack, you can choose from all the old ships that uh, that were there. And uh, this video has already gotten quite long, so I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. A review of this ship will be coming next week, as, long as, as well as some discussion videos about Star Trek Discovery, and specifically Star Trek Discovery Season 1. And I have some other ideas in mind for video ideas talking about Star Trek Online. Specifically, uh, how do we define the difference between a casual and a hardcore gamer? So stay tuned for all of that. Take care of yourselves and bye for now.